today is the last day of this series of uh, trainings that we have been conducting for the past i think 10 days maybe hey and uh, what we intend to do today is uh, rework on a pro- um, you know or, or or reconduct the training which uh, a part of the training which was there earlier uh, on the uh, auto scaling portion right so uh, so i said uh, in the previous training that i mean uh, that when this was uh, uh, happening is um, that that auto scaling is the reason why aws became so famous initially and uh, 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 the the why why we why we do primarily auto scaling is is to optimize um, uh, our cost cost of running the infra okay so if we take a step back you know and we try to understand what was happening earlier you know earlier what is uh, when it comes to sizing so a typical cio or an operation infra operation guy you know uh, has one major challenge you know the challenge is that um, uh, every 5 or 6 years they have to send uh, basically they have to do a hardware refresh okay that means they have to buy new hardware a refresh is nothing but buying a new hardware because the old hardware uh, reaches the end of life end of support and all you know so you have to buy the hardware so the management asks them okay what is your forecast for the next 5 years so this gentleman will go and talk to the application team get all the forecasts okay and say okay here is what it is you know i need another 150 servers or 100 or 50 servers let's say let's take a small number you know i need a 50 instances and all these 50 instances are something which i i need to upgrade and my application team has said that in the next 5 years in the future 5 years you know we are going to use at least you know uh, something um, like you know 40% or 50% more than what we had provision so let's say these 50 uh, instances uh, cumulative uh, core and ram let's say was about uh, you know um, uh, 500 cores and 2 uh, terabyte ram or, or 5 terabyte ram uh, the cumulative of this okay so now if i say increase of 50% you know i'm going to increase that 5 terabyte to 7 and 1/2 terabytes and you know and whatever core by another 50% okay so uh, and of course i'll present the case to the management manager will say okay invite three different uh, tenders or uh, three different quotations from three different vendors and then you do a nice tough negotiation and bring down the cost and the order is placed okay this is a fairly like 5 6 7 8 months uh, activity that keeps on happening depending on the size of infra we are talking about now the reality what happens is Uh, in the next 5 years if you look back you will find that okay you have bought certain size of core and ram in reality you do not use more than 15 or 20% of that okay how this works is suppose you have let's say 50 instances you know each instance uh, this for let's have let's say each of those instances are having four core uh, cpu so in cumulative you have 200 core cpus if i if i consolidate and i try to understand what is the total usage of all the cpus i may reach something like 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 cpu that the uh, cores that are being utilized what about the rest okay and now when i say cumulative this looks simple but what people would have done is they would have installed applications on all these 500 um, uh, 50 instances okay so uh so all of the instances are being used and all are being all being underutilized so to mitigate this uh, what aws uh, came out with the funda of saying that i am going to give you instances on demand okay which all of us know i'm very sure what is on demand instances okay and uh, you take demand instance when you want and you remove it when you want as simple as that so when it comes to auto scale all then aws said okay fine you know you know uh, the real life problem is that you really don't know when i will install a new capacity or when i would add a new capacity so aws said fine we will create a simple logic 
of allowing a new instance coming and getting added to your load balancer. It is uh, a very simple logic. So, so what are the load? So, so this this what you see. This is a very familiar uh, architecture of AWS. Okay, and what you see here is an auto. You know, uh, basically here this portion is what we are talking today. The auto scale part of it. Okay, so there are four instances running, and it is running under a load balancer. So when when auto scale happens, okay. Uh, there is a rule that is set. So in general, what would be the rule you will set for auto scale? Okay, you can set a rule saying that, okay, give me more servers when. Okay, rule number one, you say CPU crosses X percentage. Rule number two, you can say memory crosses x percentage okay number three anything you know network out data crosses x bytes okay you can have you know uh, if uh, your disk iops increases beyond x iops something okay so so basically these are the rules okay so there are a lot of predefined rules and there are a lot of custom rules that you can create okay so uh, and a funda is very simple so give me more servers we will discuss about more when any of these if any of or one of depending okay let's say if any of the uh, you basically set one of these if you have to set multiple of if one of the above is two then launch one instance one or more instance from the predefined uh, EMI. We all know what is an EMI. Okay, launch one or more instances from the predefined EMI and attach it to This load balancer, some load balancer that that you would have predefined. Okay, so what what does this do? I'm saying the simple rule. This is a very simple rule. Okay, give me more servers when either of these thresholds are two. Then launch one or more instance. I can define whether I want one instance or two or twenty. Doesn't matter. Okay, while creating the rules. From a predefined AMI, so this is this is the key, okay? Predefined AMI, okay? So so which instance to launch, okay? So what is what, what does this do? Basically, uh, steps. What are the steps? I create an instance. Then I configure. All the required software app DB on that instance number three. I trigger an AMI of this pre configured instance. Okay, then ID. So this AMI has an ID. Okay, so I say, I write this rule and say launch instance on this 
MIID and attach it to this some load balancer which you already have created. So, so what will happen when you have when you are done with this? What essentially will happen is this auto scaling will come into effect. So this guy. So what now? Uh, so so as soon as the average. So for example, this in this architecture has got four instances already running. So now understand if the average CPU, okay, average of all the four crosses this threshold. So I will update this. If I say average of CPU or average of memory, okay, crosses a threshold, let's say it crosses a 70%, I would ask autoscale to trigger a new instance. How does autoscale trigger? Autoscale is, is, a, is a static entity. Okay, it's the CloudWatch alarm that triggers. So CloudWatch will keep monitoring. As soon as the average increases 70% and beyond, it will trigger the autoscale rule which will launch an instance and attach it to the load balancer. Okay, so the whole game is actually being played by CloudWatch, CloudWatch and CloudWatch alarms. So you, so you practically, you come here and set the alarm. Okay, eventually you will see, Puja will give you a demo. Okay, you will see how these alarms are set. Okay, but otherwise, no big deal. You know, this, this is a very simple science. Based on, let's say, I've written a program which is just counting. Okay, every day, as soon as it, let's say, I wrote a program that which is running inside my my instance, and it says that if, as soon as the clock ticks twelve, launch to instance. As soon as the clock tick ticks uh, three, remove to instance. Okay, or it can be an internal. Uh, uh, I mean, I've run a cron in a, and that is reading my running processes. Okay. And I, some, I write a program saying that if this particular process has used more than 70% of the CPU, given CPU, then trigger instance. Anything. I mean, it can be just anything, you know. So, so, uh, so, so I can, uh, you know, that those rules when it's supposed to trigger is absolutely in our hand. All we need to do is trigger the cloud watch, and it will and it will create an alarm. That's it. An alarm and the auto scale would uh, uh, work. Okay. So, so similarly, so I would say rule. We will say what is this uh, uh, scale up rule? Okay. So suppose I had given here process seventy percent. So similarly, we will write a scale down rule of the same thing. So, average of CPU is less than, let's say, 40%. You can't be up and down 40%. Servers will come up, servers will go down. Go up and down, up and down. That's what it will do. So, you cannot uh, write something. Okay. Uh, like that. So similarly, if you know whatever, if one of the above is true, then remove. Okay. Basically, this is add instances from the load balancer. Which uh, here's another set of rules. Which instance? You know, there are five of them running. Then there are a set of rules for that. You know, one of the rules which says is uh, which has been launched the most recent. Something like that. There is there is some other sentence for this, but we can select that. You know, so it's like that. We have another two, three, 
or four different kind of rules for this which one to remove okay and let's say no and okay it gets removed so this is the funda okay so one another use case too i'll give you of auto scale on the good or, or i'll give you one use case i'll give you two more use case okay use case three so use case two is if an application goes down how do i know it if the http slash s port ping stops response ping stops giving you a 200 then okay so if the is the say then load balancer will remove the instance okay this is a load balancer um, uh, rule okay if if there is an instance which is not responding it will just stop remo remove that instance and stop sending sending traffic to it then if i remove the instance i will tell autoscale give me a minimum of two instances or more two or ten whatever instances on the load balancer so as soon as lb removes one instance auto scale will add another healthy instance to the load balancer okay, i hope this is clear if the application now see that two things you do a tcp check and a https check when you do a tcp check you are actually checking the port when you are checking that is your instance is it up or down is the port available when you do a http or https check you are checking whether your application is available or not okay so the instance or the server must be running but the application is down because the apache has failed or Tom tomcat has failed or there is a lot of load on the server whatever so it's down right so uh, you can do both kind of check on the load balance server depending on what check you have done now anyways to us, if the instance is down the port or the application the load balancer has the uh, capability to remove that instance and stop sending traffic to it so that means auto scale if i if i had launched the servers using auto scale auto scale will even immediately come to know that i was supposed to give two instances. one of them has been removed let me add one more so in, in within few minutes you will see that a new server is spawned and it is getting launched added to the load balancer so this happens this keeps happening automatically right so th that is one very good use case typically this can be used when in cases or in applications which are very badly programmed okay which goes down frequently and whenever it goes down you need to do a restart of the application instance or the servers why do you keep doing it manually you just do this okay or the aws itself will take care of uh, starting or restarting the servers whenever the application goes down any which ways that response will be much faster than you going in and doing so okay so it will give you a better thing one more use case if i give you uh, in case of so what i can do is i can spawn in senses under the load balancer across multiple AVs. We all know AZ, so I'll, I'm sure. So we are not going to go inside that. Okay. So in case one AZ goes down, which has happened in the past, never in Mumbai yet, I should, but it has gone down in other 
other regions. Okay, AWS. The good part is that the entire region has never gone down. Okay, but there are instances of seven, eight times in the past ten, twelve years that one of the AZs have gone down. Right. So in case one AZ goes down, auto scale will. Okay. What happens when the AZ goes down? The LB will. Which has a scope of uh, across AZ. That means a load balancer has a is as a has a region level scope. Okay, I would say scope of region. Okay, loses the instances under it. Okay, because the AZ has gone down, so obviously this is not there. Auto scale scope of auto scale is also region. Therefore, it will launch the it will launch new instances onto the. Available, easy. Okay, so 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 you see, you know, there is there is no end to the creativity under which you can use this auto scale function on whatever like way you can write whatever way you can work on you can write the auto scale, and these are so simple functions, you know, uh, even to write, you know, we have written in Minfi, you know, like I had, and obviously those are time when there were very few people in the company, you know, so. I had gone to a company called uh, Cotelligent. Okay, the auto scale function of uh, uh, AWS. So, so these guys are Oracle, you know, uh, kind of uh, workshop partners, big time SSO. They used to implement Oracle SSOs in all. So they wanted uh, um, uh, to to automate the launch sequence for their Oracle SSO demos, which used to typically take a couple of weeks to work on. Okay, so. So what we did, we went there on the AWS. We understood their whole sequence of process, and uh, we wrote custom auto scaling for them. Okay, so and and auto scaling was what you know understand the CPU RAM usage and write programs and it will trigger applications and all that. Sorry, it is. So we have written in in we have also written custom auto scale rules. Okay, for uh, the thing. So so the creativity is endless. Whatever you use, wherever you use. Of course, we are using right now as defaults, you know, for application owners or the application servers. Okay, but the bottom line is, you know, this is automation, right? How you want to automate? What you want to automate? Would you like to write custom rules? Would you like to write custom CloudWatch alarms? Okay, on a custom parameter or take the defaults? It is absolutely up to you. No stopping. You know, you can uh, you can just um, uh, program this to work. To the best of available, um, uh, or to the best of the optimization rules that you can create for the client. Okay, so this is more about auto scale as a uh, uh, as a you know kind of uh, introduction. Right, you can take a screenshot of this if you want. If you want to read this later, anyways, this I should. I'm sure this is getting recorded. Ah, correct. Okay, you can take a screenshot of this and uh, uh, read it. You know, it's like a quick reference. Okay, Just, uh, before Pooja starts the demo, I'll quickly introduce you to spot instances. Okay, uh, so uh, so um, I actually I'll I'll run a separate um, quick uh, review on the uh, reserve instance models and all. But let's understand the spot instances. Okay, so which Pooja will be showcasing you. Should you know what know what it is? So the spot instances are very simple. AWS has AWS has spare capacity. With spare capacity, like when you go and launch a server and you get a server, sorry, launch an instance and you get an instance. Obviously, those hardware is already there. They're only you're able to launch. So, so, so AWS keeps adding additional hardware into that data center on a continued and daily basis. Okay, daily basis. It's not like even one week, week, once a week or once a month. No, every day they keep adding hardware. So obviously they have some kind of uh, metrics in terms of what percentage of the hardware needs to be always free. So, so let's say 
um, so so let's say they said that okay any point of time if my uh, instance total core and ram utilized in my in, in my data center is x then uh, i should uh, always have uh, a 30% or a 40 or a 50 or a 200% more than whatever is being used so what do you do with this spare capacity okay it is all there lying idle right so aws auctions it it straight away auctions it and the auction price is obviously set by the user by like you and me anyone okay most of the time you will uh, 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 an instance which is costing you 100 let's say rupees for the sake of it okay may be available to you between 15 to 30 rupees so that is the kind of discount that you get okay But obviously good things comes with a catch so what is the catch here okay one instance will get terminated with the 5 minute notice Or maybe lesser than that, or whatever. You just check into the reference manuals as to what is five minutes or lesser than that. Or okay, terminated. It's over. It's finished. Okay, so you cannot get anything. So what we do is now there are more add-ons to this. Now you can you can uh, buy or or let's say you can uh, instead of instead of termination, you can. reserve the disk and only and the instance will go in top state top slash hibernate okay so what happens is as soon as this happens you know you have run an instance so what i'll do is what puja will show you now is i will have a load balancer under the load balancer i will have on demand or ri instance let's say two of them and i will have auto scale this is permanent let's say for example auto scale me i will say launch spot instances Say two spot instances. Okay, so for example, these two servers are costing me two hundred bucks, and for these two servers, I have got eighty uh, percent discount. So it is at eighty bucks, right? Uh, please excuse the maths. Okay, twenty plus uh, so twenty right? So twenty plus twenty forty bucks. Okay, so total cost is going to be this plus this. But if I had taken everything on at two hundred. rupees then it would have costed me 400 rupees okay so this is what is the difference right 20 20 40 okay sorry as usual right so 280 and 240 so this is the difference in terms of costing by just using auto scale now the question is correct if the spot instances get removed what happens i told you if you remember auto scale if if one instance if auto scale is supposed to give you two instances and one has has vanished auto scale will again automatically bid for your instance and get you a server here right so this is how this whole system works so you look at the kind of saving that you can do if you really do a good planning with a mix of on demand and stop in spot instances okay so this is or uh, this is something which uh, puja will uh, 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 will be showing you how to configure auto scale and she will also show you how we uh, this is uh, we, we have done uh, uh, this sizing for uh, our client inadu right it's a live example that you can see how inadu is working and what kind of sizing has been uh, done on the infrastructure so that will give you a very good understanding of what i'm talking right so uh, so any questions or over to puja anyways so if there is any question let me know puja there yes sir Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So hi everyone. Good evening. Uh, so first, I will uh, show how we can uh, create a load balancer with a um, mixture of uh, spot and on demand, and then I will show the live example, which is uh, Inado account. 
uh, okay so while uh, we we all know that how to create the auto scaling group you have so, to zoom in a little your screen is very small okay no sir more more further enough ah it is good unless okay. so when we try to create uh, auto scaling group there will be two options launch configuration and uh, launch template so as we can see the description here launch configuration will allow you to uh, create the configuration with the you know normal uh, ec2 features uh, and launch uh, template will allow you to create the uh, combination of the instance types combination of on demand and uh, spot and this is the latest or updated version we can say this launch configuration uh, so when we select uh, launch template i have already created one you know test launch template i can show again like um, where you can go and what are the options uh, so under instances you will be able to see launch templates so if you click on that you can click on create a, a create launch template so you can uh, give name and the description of the template and you can define the ami from which you want to you know create the instance automatically and the instance type by default what you want to keep okay uh, this if whatever instance type you are uh, selecting here this is a default instance type and combination we can uh, select while creating the auto scaling group itself and the key pair name whichever we want and the security group and also we can have uh, instance tags volume tags uh, we can uh, define uh, you know one constant name for all the instances which is being created by uh, using this template and the network interface if any specifically and then uh, create the launch template and after that we'll be going to auto scaling group and create an auto scaling group you will be selecting launch template and the template which you have selected already okay and uh, this is the name test this is the version okay so as of now we have default version 1 and whenever you want to update the ami right then again Then you will go to launch template and you update the AMI and save it, and that will create one more uh, default version, one more version as two. So whenever uh, you want to update auto scaling group, you can go and select the uh, version two that time after you update. So as of now, we have one uh, one uh, version which we have not modified, and uh, so I'm selecting the. second option here combine purchase options and instances so where i can select multiple instance type here like this and whichever instance uh, this is this sequence has the priority so first it will you know search for t3a micro itself if this is not there and it will go to to x slash if not the third instance so this way the priority is defined and uh, com i know usually we saw some uh, issues or errors on auto scaling group uh, some of the instance types are not available and the scale up uh, is not working at that time it will it will show failed because that particular instance type uh, which you want to scale up was uh, not available at that moment so at the in that help because if the first one is not available it will select the second one and if not the third one okay and uh, use default uh, setting and uh, 
this option we can uh, select again once we uh, create the auto scaling group if you have any load balancer if not i will select some target group for testing purpose So health check type, I'm selecting ELB. So the difference uh, between ELB uh, health check and EC2 is uh, nothing but uh, EC2 health check will work only when if EC2, EC2 is stopped, it will show unhealthy. Uh, if EC2 is up and running, uh, the instance will be healthy itself. Uh, but if we select ELB, what happens uh, on target group, we will define the health checks, right? Uh, so, for example, this target group has HTTP and uh, this path. Uh, for example, uh, you have some XYZ.com website hosted on this load balancer. This uh, health check will be uh, keep on checking uh, that uh, slash path, uh, uh, the whatever contents on uh, slash path, index.php, whatever. If it is working, it will show healthy. If it is not working, it will show unhealthy. So while uh, selecting the health check type, if we select ELB, that will be good because if your application is down, uh, uh, instance will become unhealthy and or, you know it will be replaced by the one it will be replaced by one more instance like that so as of now i will uh, keep this group in initial size and again i'll configure the uh, cloud watch now So uh, this is getting created now. The desired is one, minimum is one, and the maximum is one. So hope you all know what is desired, what is minimum and max. Desired is uh, uh, how many instances are required to run for the current load on the web, uh, on the servers, uh, and minimum is uh, the minimum number of instances you want to maintain. And maximum is the number of uh, maximum instances you want to maintain. If uh, maximum is three, minimum uh, maximum is five, and minimum is two, then desired will be two at first. And if the load is keep on increasing, it will increase up to five. So that is the desired uh, value. So uh, here uh, you can see these are the we can go to new switch to new console. Uh, as well but as of now i'll explain here so we have uh, activity history this will have each and every activity is happening uh, launch of instance terminating instance if it is getting terminated why it is getting terminated there's that reason also will be written here the cause of the activity and if it is failed why it is failed maybe instance type is not available or your ami id is not allowing you to create new instance sometimes error with amis okay and the scaling policies can be defined here if i'm selecting this is uh, increase policy it average cpu target value is more than uh, this 50 300. instead of this i will create the policy separately because i can i cannot uh, 
mention this ad and all over there. Uh, so you will have to select the, you will have to create one uh, alarm on CloudWatch. This is something like uh, you will be mentioning the alarm any one alarm if you select and if this alarm is getting triggered then this is the action is being taken like uh, you can add if it is increase policy for example you have selected here you have created the uh, alarm You can select any matrix here. I'll select DB EC2. Securitization of this. I'm selecting this metric. And select this average uh, CPU. So when greater than or equal to anything, any of one of this, because I'm creating the increase policy now. Uh, I'll define the value 60. We can also have uh, SNS uh, created for this. So I've created this alarm. Now we can uh, select the alarm under uh, policy here. So we have to name it as increase policy, and we can we, we can have increase policy and uh, decrease policy. So here I have to select the one policy I have uh, selected. So execute policy when this alarm trigger, triggers test instance alarm so test instance alarm is nothing but we have selected over there uh, when the cpu is um, uh, higher than 60 percent you can see the target here 60 percent uh, when the average cpu is higher than 60 percent for the selected instance this alarm will trigger and it will come under uh, red color here so at the same time the policy, the increase policy will be triggered when the alarm, uh, when this alarm is in red color, the action will be at one instance. It is your wish. You can select any number of instances. For example, uh, you have uh, the, um, you need the website, uh, you have high load on the website or something you know uh, when this triggers when this alarm triggers then you can have two you can add two instance at a time so that, that will uh, uh, quickly balance the load instead one okay and uh, then wait till how many seconds you want to wait once one instance is added and it is ready to serve new request and uh, how many uh, how many seconds you want to wait before adding one more instance before triggering this scaling policy again so you you can select uh, how much ever you want if you have selected two here you can increase this wait time 
you have selected one here you can uh, keep less wait time here so that uh, it will quickly add the next one if the load is uh, uh, critical on the server so this way this is an increase policy same way we will add decrease policy so for decrease policy we will we will have to create the alarm same like this but we are uh, we will be selecting less than instead of greater than in the first step we have selected greater than right we can select low the threshold any person like 40 percent and then uh, you can uh, you know mention that alarm here and uh, and the action would be and the action would be remove remove one instance at a time and uh, how many time how many seconds to wait before it is removing the second instance so this is how uh, you can uh, define the policies and the next section is instances okay so here it will show the number of instances running okay so i i have missed one uh, part on on detail okay so here you can see optional on demand base and on demand percentage so this means uh, you can define how many uh, you know on demand base instances you want so for example you have uh, minimum number of instances are 3 then if you select uh, uh, you know base instance as one the first instance will be on demand it will not be spot because we are defining here the base instance the optional on demand base will be one then the first ins instance will be one uh, on demand and the next instance will be created out of the as per this percentage so we have selected 70 percent of on demand and 30 percent of spot then more on demand instances will be running less spot instances will be running so if we keep 20 here if we, if we keep 20 so 80 percent of spot instances will be running out of three consider you have minimum number of three instances running then on demand base is one the first instance will be on demand Okay, and even the second instance will be on demand because you have mentioned 20% of uh, instance will be on demand and third will be spot. Okay. So two on demand, when you have this uh, percentage 20 or 30 like this, you will have uh, as a one on demand base, then you will have two, two on demand and one spot. And when uh, when the you know mini minimum number or the desired number is increasing to five and all, next instances will be spot because spot percentage is high. Okay, so you will be able to see the status of the instances here, and uh, here there are some options. Uh, you can keep instances set to standby at any time. Uh, you, uh, uh, for example, instances are getting unhealthy, and you don't know the reason. And when you are going and checking, instances are be getting terminated, and you are not able to check the logs. So what you can do immediately, you can keep this instance as uh, standby. I need to add one more instance because minimum one should be there. So this this instance is uh, entering to standby and uh, it will not be under auto scaling uh, uh, policies. That means uh, though it is unhealthy, it will not get terminated or something. Then you can log into the instance and uh, you can uh, fetch the logs. What is uh, happening exactly? And again, you correct everything on that instance you can uh, keep it in service again set to in service option it is in gray now because it is still uh, entering to standby 
once it is uh, sh showing here standby you will be able to uh, log into the server and uh, do whatever changes you want to do and again you keep it under uh, in service in service means it will be under uh, auto scaling group and this is monitoring part uh, which everyone know you will be able to get uh, two weeks of data here the number of capacities uh, at what uh, you can uh, you know uh, go through this uh, monitorings and you can define the proper values for your auto scaling group uh, if you go through this uh, uh, you know minimum group size at what time the number of instances are increasing at what time number of instances are decreasing you you can study on that and you can uh, define proper uh, you know scaling policies minimum and desired numbers and even you can set the schedule as per this monitoring and uh, this is recently added the notification so you will be you 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 can it is for, uh, previously you will be uh, you you will be able to you know create the notifications under cloudwatch now they they have made it easy by giving one one more option as a noti notification so you will be able to create the notification here when the instance is launching you want to get the notification you can get it when terminating fail to launch whenever there is a fail uh, like uh, because of instance type unavailability or some issues you will be getting the alert and fail to terminate even this option and tax this option also added uh, recently and uh, you will be able to add uh, any tax you can define any tax here so that whatever tax you are adding the instance which is being created by this auto scaling group will have that tag and this is scheduled uh, actions uh, you can um, define uh, you know you can have a scheduled action for example you have a website or you have an application where you have uh, too much traffic in the morning but not in the night so you can have a schedule night scale down so that time you need not go and uh, uh, manually change the minimum and maximum number of instances uh, so for example daytime you are keeping minimum number of instances as uh, 5 and night time you want it 3 you can keep it 3 maximum how many you want 10 something and desired number of instances at that point of time for example you know 10 o'clock is uh, less traffic on the website or the application you have to keep it you can keep it same as minimum okay because the minimum you have selected three you you always have to keep desired and minimum equal you cannot have uh, desired capacity less than minimum So recurrence you want it to happen today only then once and you can mention the date and time or you want it you want cron job you can mention the cron job here how you mention on linux same like that and select the same whatever they have given here So from today, I want to start. I can select today's date. No, uh, when you select this cron, it's not mandated to select this. Because that is happening every day, right? So you need not have start and stop time because start is mentioned here itself. So 11 o'clock today, <coughs> the minimum will be 3, maximum will be 20, and the desired... Uh, will be same as uh, minimum same way you can have uh, <coughs> morning scale up uh, schedule so that you know morning uh, five o'clock or six o'clock the traffic will be more again you can uh, create one more uh, scheduled action where you can have minimum number of instances five and maximum how much ever you want so this is a uh, life cycle Oops. so where you will on before the instance is uh, terminating 
you can uh, you can have the metadata all here uh, to pull the logs as well so far uh, i have uh, not uh, created anything so you can using this life cycle hook you can gather all the logs on uh, cloudwatch before it is getting terminated so you can mention here So this is how uh, we are creating auto scaling group with the template. So the auto scaling group with the launch template and launch configuration has only difference on detail. Here you can see this is the instance. Uh, this is the auto scaling group with launch configuration only. You will be mentioning only these values here when it comes to EC2 features. Uh, you will define minimum number of instances, maximum number of instances, and desired. Uh, and you will not have any option to select mixture of spot, mixture of uh, instance types. So that is the on, that is the advantage on uh, you know launch template, which we can even suggest to clients uh, for the cost optimization uh and uh, memory so we all know that on aws ec2 instance monitoring will have only cpu metrics so auto uh, aws will uh, calculate the cpu usage and it is very easy for us to create the alarm for cpu just by selecting under the metric cpu usage but for the memory what we can do is uh, you can um, uh, you can install the CloudWatch agent on your instance and uh, you can see here this is the matrix so when uh, so when you install CloudWatch agent metric you can monitor two things one is memory utilization of the instance and the disk utilization so as we are using site 24 7 we are not doing this uh, memory monitoring and disk monitoring on cloudwatch because we have a third party tool but you want to set up a auto scaling group for example some applications will use more cpu some applications will use uh, less cpu uh, so at that point of time you want it based on memory then you can install uh, cloudwatch agent under system and linux one new uh, custom dashboard will be added system and linux and there you can go and select the memory utilization and set the value whatever you want alarm you create the alarm and you can define that alarm under activity uh, scaling policies and the memory is below down uh, you know less uh, make it less and when it is uh, above the threshold uh, add one capacity or whatever it is so i can show in our account where we have uh, defined all these values and uh, the live uh, example it is which is working properly for now so we have we have uh you know on demand base as one and uh you know the on demand percentage as 20 and there are uh, five instances running under uh, this auto scaling group so how many instances uh, will be on spot minimum three should be on spot on demand one base one will be on demand and on demand percentage is 20 again one more on demand and uh, actually you know remaining three should be on spot if not two will be on sp spot so let us check that yeah. so here you can see the life cycle two are on demand three are spot so this is as per my calculation is correct because 
on demand basis one one is minimum uh, you know the first instance will be on demand and the second condition will come on demand percentage 20 percent so out of 100 20 percent is on demand means at least one should be on demand so one is one more on demand that means two on demand and three spot instances and uh, you are able to see the instance types here so this is mixture c5 4x large four instances and m5 4x large four instances and the cpu average so you can see the activity history here terminating the ec2 instance the cause is uh, is saying that alarm triggered policy decreasing decrease policy changing the desired capacity to five from six okay so the cause will be mentioned there uh, the mm. decrease policy alarm was triggered and the instance total count was six and it was reduced to five and sometimes uh, termination will happen to balance the AZs. So under uh, this load balance uh, AZs, right? Like um, uh, availability zone, um, if you have five, then three will be in one A, two will be in one B. If you have uh, four instances, two should be on one A and two should be on one B. So uh, when the in uh, when the auto scaling is triggering the increase policy sometimes it will create uh, all the instances on one a then it itself balance the load like it itself uh, you know uh, terminate one instance on one a and it will create on one b like that so we don't have to handle anything manually here everything will be done uh, automatically and here we have uh, scheduled actions uh, you are able to see night scale down. We are uh, doing it at 12 o'clock exactly. Okay, and uh, so the actual minimum value will be is four now, and maximum is 20. At night time, we are you know reducing it to two, so that night time only two instances will be running. And again, morning five o'clock, we are uh, you know getting it back as uh, four minimum instances. So we have uh, using this spot and the scheduled uh, action, we have almost uh, saved around uh, 50 to 60 percent on their uh, EC2 cost. So as um, as we know that uh, in Aru, they need they may need when the CP is going beyond 60 percent. Uh, what we felt is to add uh, two instances instead of one instance so that uh, the you know load will be balanced quickly so that we are adding two and we are waiting for 90 seconds if the cpu is still more than 60 again the two capacity will be added so, and the uh, again average uh, cpu will be calculated for 180 seconds it's less than 30 percent again it will be decreased so nothing manual here so at some time we know that uh, there are a lot of traffic is coming in today and which is very important for customer so at that time it is not that uh, uh, good to uh, have uh, you know trust on spot instance at that time so for example today is the result and uh, they want uh, you know the instance should be up and running at any you know cost then uh, it is better to increase the on-demand percentage that day we don't want to take the risk by trusting spot uh, at you know uh, at the critical time then that day you can increase the on-demand base and you can increase the on-demand percentage right uh, yes I'm done hope you all are uh, clear so if any doubts uh... so uh, thanks uh, thanks Pooja. so yeah. so guys uh, um, so i hope the last uh, eight or ten sessions that we had uh, uh, gave you quite a bit of understanding of what uh, uh, the various components around aws is okay the the fun around is uh, uh, as i always been saying you know not being a button presser 
okay so if any of these demos and all that you are seeing how to do and all a dime doesn't available on the net and on this is a repeat maybe for the 30th time okay it is it is all available on the net uh, the fun is in you know using these all these split components together and in a very creative way okay so so every feature that aws is giving they are they are like more than 120 or some odd features or or, or services and components uh, which they have been providing okay how do you come out with a use case how do you use what component in what particular use case okay and where so this is uh, something which uh, uh, is the is actual knowledge right apart from that everything is good so don't worry about how to increase an ebs size you do it once you do it always big thing okay do not worry about about uh, how to configure a nat gateway uh, how to uh, root uh, uh, use root tables in uh, uh, nscls or what is security group knowing them is important but when someone asks you okay that tell me what are the stateful and stateless uh, firewalls and why should i when should i use a stateless at what layer should i use stateless okay at uh, when should, if i'm using auto scale which which is puja was showing right now it's an absolute creativity in how do we use it you know when should it be 20% when should we do 40% okay how do we understand the correlation between various component uh, various uh, uh, components that you have used like you know from cloud front then comes waf then comes uh, your load balancer then comes uh, your your application servers then comes your database and which layer is misbehaving okay for your application to go down so so all these are something few things which we will be trying to resolve in the next uh, sessions that we are we are planning now those will be the sessions on architecture okay and uh, we'll be picking one architecture and uh, we will uh, start uh, telling you how the components work together so we have like a list of seven eight architectures that we would be uh, preparing and working on okay and uh, we'll be presenting to you that is those are the sessions i mean these first sessions are very important for those um, uh, architecture sessions because uh, they are uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, i mean these these are kind of the preludes to it you need to at least know what the component is to join them together okay but that architecture session will now tell you how to use them so uh, to repeat i think you all have let me share my screen again before we sign off uh, okay so so i hope you you have access to all this okay basically this this will lead you to aws dot training okay and uh, trust me you don't have to go anywhere you can just come here and and read and 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 learn you know cloud practitioner essentials ec2 cloud introduction to serverless development okay cloud a lot of fundamental trainings are there database offerings network ninja to cloud ninja you know if you have come from a networking background this is very good you know you should look at this okay and machine learnings you know so 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 run through these you know these are these are the trainings which are which are for you and the best part is that you are not one of those less privileged guys who do not who are reading this who are learning this but they don't have any place to implement you know today your situation is that you have a live working kicking environment where you can implement things all you need to know is learn okay i and my favorite way of learning is like i spend half an hour a day that's it okay if i on something you know well architected something i'll spend one half an hour that's it beyond that i cannot study and i'm not made to study right so but every half an hour in a week gives me a lot of hours of uh, new knowledge out of those hours i'll retain maybe only half or maybe only 30% but that is a 30% growth in my knowledge you know that i can use somewhere so 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 when i go to a client all of a sudden client says you know we is this possible then what happens is i recall huh, i have read this about somewhere so in front of the client i do a google search where where is there i think give me one second you know i do a research no search on google and say hey, this is there this is how it works okay no harm in that you know no one is expecting you to testing your memory around it but the important is that you know that there is something around it and these are the places you have to go and learn okay udemy is also there uh, till date very few people have asked me for any course 
okay we have a security course that has been purchased now uh, uh, which which should be accessible to everyone okay and uh, i'm again giving you the username password if you want to write um, udemy.com so we at infitech.com i don't know what is the password minfi at 123 or maybe capital minfi at 123 if you're not able to log in just let me know you know we will we'll let you know okay what is the thing but either of these two should work okay so there you go there you know you find the courses that whatever is there if you want to if you have some very interesting course which you would really like to work on and learn let me know okay we will purchase it right and we'll add it there so 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 keep visiting these all these videos will you'll get another mail with all the video links of all the trainings that has happened till date okay if, if you are not understood anything just run through them again right so prabhu will take care of uh, sending that uh, links to all of you and the ppts so thanks a lot and uh, let's uh, meet again